Welcome back to Therapeutic Moment. I am Stephanie Patterson and I'm here to teach you better ways to cope and mental health tricks and tips so that you can have better mental health in your life. Are you getting enough sleep? No, like really getting enough sleep. Like seven to nine hours every night of solid sleep. Or if you're a teenager, it could be eight to 10. Or if you're a kid, school age kid, um, you need nine to 12 hours of sleep. And if you're not getting enough, you might feel really tired, lethargic, maybe moody, difficulty focusing or concentrating or reduced libido. And this kind of sounds familiar. Maybe you just feel plain old tired. Well, today I'm going to go through and teach you how to get some solid sleep. Let's go. Tip number one, use your bed only for sleeping or intimacy. And that's it. And the reason why you want to do that is because your brain, they makes, it makes these associations with things. And so, you know, um, like if you go and sit on your couch and you watch TV every time you sit on your couch, well, when you sit on your couch, you're going to automatically reach for that remote because you just do it automatically. Or if you eat at a certain table in your house, every time you sit down at that table, you're going to start feeling a little bit hungry because your brain has linked those two things up. So, it helps keep our lives on automatic so we don't have to think through every single thing that we're doing which is really nice but sometimes it can work against you when those associations go a little bit wrong direction uh, you might have a problem you know such as if you use your bed for work then every time you go to bed, you're gonna be thinking about work. Maybe you worry about things. Maybe it's your to-do list that you run through, um, suddenly remembering everything that you forgot to do that day. If you eat on your bed, uh, you'll associate eating with on your bed. Maybe Netflix, Facebook, uh, video games, or being frustrated from trying to sleep. If you do those things on your bed, then when you go to fall asleep on your bed, your brain's going to be super confused on what it is you're trying to do. So refrain from using your bed from all of those activities. I know it's a cozy place to sit, but please don't do it. Save it. Save it only for sleep or intimacy. Okay. So that means you might have to rearrange things a little bit, either get in the habit of using the other rooms in your house for those activities which is a really good alternative if you have free range of the house um, just to stay out of the bedroom completely. Or if you're in kind of a roommate situation or you feel like really your room is your only place that you can safely hang out, well then create another space in your room for that. Maybe you have a little table and chair. Maybe you have a cozy chair in there. Maybe you just have a pile of pillows in the corner where you can sit on the floor and do those activities, you know? Working, schoolwork, listening to music, doing um, crafts, whatever it is, Netflix that you like to do in your room on your bed, do it somewhere else off of the bed, okay? Keep the bed, it needs to be sacred just for sleeping. So resist, resist. Number two, you gotta make the bed tempting. Okay, so now I'm telling you, okay, you can't be on it unless you are needing to go to sleep, but also you gotta make it feel lovely so that you want to get into it all day long. So that means maybe you make it feel good by getting new sheets that feel really nice. Make it smell good, so wash it often. Maybe spray some um, nice scent, lavender smell or something like that on your bed. You can, you know, add, if you like soothing sounds and that sort of stuff, you can play it quietly in the background. Uh, you just don't want to become too dependent on sounds while you're falling asleep. But if it helps you relax, then go ahead. You want to make it like you're going into a spa. You want your bed to look like it is so tempting to get into it, but then you don't. And rule number three, you gotta set the mood a little bit. You need your body time to adjust and figure out that it needs to start unwinding and get ready for sleep. 
That means you need to turn the lights down low or off completely. You need to be off all screens, and yes, all of them, even your cell phone, all the way up until about a half an hour before bed. So aim for an hour, because you know that means you'll actually do probably closer to a half hour if you aim for an hour, even aim for two hours. You'll probably stop using your phone as often and doing mindless things on it. So aim for an hour, maybe two if you're feeling really you know, ambitious. Give yourself some time to do slower things and relax. You gotta have some kind of system and rhythm in place. So it'd be fairly much the same every night. So maybe you take a shower or a bath or do some artistic, soothing, relaxing thing. Um, nice grooming, maybe take time to wash your hair or pamper your skin or whatever your routines are. Make it seem a little bit enjoyable and spa-like to relax you. Um, reading to a child from a book. You know, every single parent starts yawning the second they're laying down and reading to their kids because they don't realize how tired they are till they do that. Light a candle, listen to relaxing music, take time in prayer or meditation, maybe do some stretching or some light yoga, um, a puzzle if it's not too, you know, mentally stimulating anything that's going to relax you very well. If you are an evening exerciser, then the r rule of thumb typically is give yourself about 90 minutes before bed. Some people need a lot longer than that, but if you can get by with exercising and then ending 90 minutes before you wanna go to sleep and it works for you, go for it. But definitely don't drink caffeine before bed. Again, four to six hours, before you need to sleep, at least. Some people are more sensitive to it to, than another. So if you wanna to go to sleep at 10 o'clock, for example, then you gotta cut off the caffeine at least by 4 p.m. And then you also wanna make sure your room is cool. If it's warm, it wakes us up. So recommendations are usually given around 65 degrees Fahrenheit. But if you live in a tropical place like I do and it gets very warm and I'm not gonna put my AC that hard all night long, you can go a little bit warmer. But just listen to your body. If you feel like you're waking up often in the night feeling warm, turn down that air or turn down the temperature and um, increase your cool air. And don't try to relax in the evening with alcohol. It may make you drowsy and you feel like it's gonna help you fall asleep, but it actually decreases the quality of your sleep. So that you feel, wake up feeling more tired than you would have if you didn't drink. A good rule of thumb here is if you, you need about one hour per drink to metabolize it. So that's a good rule of thumb. Don't drink right before bed um, and definitely don't binge drink before bed. And an important key here is consistency. I'm sorry, but you're gonna have to wake up at the same time every day, and that includes on the weekends. So if you set your morning time, you can back up and figure out how, when your bedtime should be. And after a while, if you wake up at the same time, you're gonna start feeling tired about when you're supposed to go to bed. So give it time to work, but it's a lot easier to just set that wake up time than it is to lure yourself into bed for most people. But over time, you should be able to retrain your body into that new timing. Now, what do you do if you can't fall asleep? Maybe you're one of those people whose mind just wanders and worries and remembers, oh, forgot to do this, or I need to go check that, or I'm really worried about this person, and you just lie there trying and trying to sleep, but you can't get a wink. Well, the recommendations are if you're laying in bed longer than 20 minutes and you're really trying to give it a good, honest effort to sleep and it's just not working, well, then get out of bed and go do some activity that is very non-stimulating. So that means no screens, very minimal lighting, uh, but you could read from a book or you can fold laundry or clean out a kitchen drawer or two, you know, you can do a little bit of 
deep but slow, you know, deep cleaning, but you can do it nice and slow, be methodical and trying to kind of lure yourself back into a sleepiness. And as soon as you feel that urge, that yawn coming on or a little bit of tiredness coming, then go back. Don't try to finish whatever it is you're doing. Go back to bed, lay down and try again for another 20 minutes. And if you still can't sleep again after those 20 minutes, then you get up and try it all over again. If you do that with consistency over time, you should be able to retrain your brain that your bed is for sleeping and it should be able to adapt and switch. So after implementing these tips for a few weeks, if you are still struggling with getting enough sleep that you want, consult a doctor. There might be other reasons why you are having a hard time and it's definitely worth the time and effort to contact your doctor and get those things figured out. Um, because not only is your physical health at risk here, but your mental health. If you're not sleeping, it's gonna be really hard for you to be a pleasant person to other people, but to be a pleasant person to exist within yourself too. So um, sleep is essential and I am excited for you to try out these tips and see how you can improve your sleep and I hope you have a very wonderfully restful night.